good evening. We'll start with a opening prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for us to study these words and as we become more aware of reality and how we are connected, may we continue to develop greater abilities, better perceptions, more enhanced sensations, and greater value fulfillment, leading us to, to feel the love for ourselves and those all in our hearts and minds harm free. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, we are continuing. We're still in Seth, Seth Speaks, Chapter 1. We are picking up, basically, at the break that ends at 1029. And this is in Session 512. And it goes like this. The self that you know is but one fragment of your entire identity. These fragment selves are not strung together like beads of a string. They are more like various skins of an onion or segments of an orange, all connected through the one vitality and growing out in various realities while springing from the same source. I am not comparing personality to an orange or an onion, but I am, want to emphasize that as these things grow from within outward, so does each fragment of the entire self. You observe the outside aspect of objects. Your physical senses permit you to perceive the exterior forms to which you then react. But your physical senses, to some extent, force you to perceive reality in this manner, and the inside vitality within manner and form is not so apparent. I can tell you, for example, that there is consciousness, even within a nail, but few of my readers will take me seriously enough to stop in mid-sentence and say good morning, or good afternoon to the nearest nail they can find stuck in a piece of wood. Nevertheless, the atoms and molecules within the nail do possess their own kind of consciousness. The atoms and molecules that make up the pages of this book are also within their own level aware. Nothing exists, either rock, mineral, plant, animal, or air, that is not filled with consciousness of its own kind. So you stand amid a constant vital commotion, a gestalt of aware energy. And you are yourselves physically composed of conscious cells that carry within themselves the realization of their own identity that cooperate willingly to form the corporal structure that is your physical body. I am saying, of course, that there is no such thing as dead matter. There is no object that was not formed by consciousness. And each consciousness, regardless of its degree, rejoices in sensation and creativity. You cannot understand what you are unless you understand such matters. For convenience sake, you close out the multitudinous inner communications that leap between the tiniest parts of your flesh. Yet even as physical creatures, you are to some extent a portion of other consciousness. There are no limitations to the self. There are no limitations to its potentials. You can adopt artificial limitations through your own ignorance, however. You can identify, for example, 
with your outer ego alone and cut yourself off from abilities that are a part of you. You can deny, but you cannot change the facts. The personality is multidimensional, even though many people hide their heads, figuratively speaking, in the sand of three-dimensional existence and pretend there is nothing more. In this book, I hope to pull some heads out of the sand. I do not mean to underestimate the outer ego. You have simply overestimated it. Nor has its true nature been recognized. We will have more to say concerning this point. But for now, it is enough to realize that your sense of identity and continuity is not dependent upon the ego. Now, at times I will be using the term camouflage, referring to the physical world to which the outer ego relates. For physical form is one of the camouflages that reality adopts. The camouflage is real, and yet there is a much greater reality within it, the vitality that gave it form. Your physical senses then allow you to perceive this camouflage, for they are attuned to it in a highly specialized manner. But to sense the reality within the form requires a different sort of attention, a more and more delicate manipulations than the physical senses provide. The ego is a jealous god, and it wants its interests served. It does not want to admit the reality of any dimensions except those within which it feels comfortable and can understand. It was meant to be an aid, but it has been allowed to become a tyrant. Even so, it is much more resilient and eager to learn than is generally supposed. It is not natively as rigid as it seems. Its curiosity can be of great value. If you have a limited conception of the nature of reality, then your ego will do its best to keep you in the small enclosed area of your accepted reality. If, on the other hand, your intuitions and creative instincts are allowed freedom, then they communicate some knowledge of greater dimensions to this most physically oriented portion of your personality. We'll stop there and come up with a sentence that summarizes these three pages. Last week's was, I am a multi-dimensional personality. One of the keys here that we will utilize and can be a benefit is when he says, its curiosity can be of great value. And here he's talking about the ego. In other words, while the ego is focused in physical reality and our physical senses allow us to see the outer aspects of all of this wonderful world, pretty much our ego has 
sort of its own domain that it wants to protect and isn't really that interested in, shall we say, losing some of its power or standing that it has achieved. Seth is reminding us that we've sort of allowed our ego to be overestimated or to be allowed to become too much of a guard or to almost become a tyrant and that we need to back off a little, start learning about the inner dimensions, allow the inner worlds and dimensions that are supporting us and actually creating all of what we see a greater leeway a greater communication. And here is the key, the ego's curiosity can be of great value. So we can use the fact that our ego, our curiosity, will be able to lead us step by step into understanding, experiencing, sensing this greater reality of which we are a part of. So we will somehow use this sentence to open ourselves up. My curiosity leads me to understand my greater self. My curiosity allows me to understand my greater self. That would still give the ego the power that it wishes to believe it has. The sentence that uh, we're going to use here to summarize tonight's words is, my curiosity allows me to understand my greater self. So that my curiosity allows me to understand my greater self. And the way it's worded is going to be, as we say it to ourselves or read it, the message goes in and it gives ourselves a command from our outer ego to our inner self that it's okay. We're telling ourselves it's okay with this sentence. That's the way it's designed. So that's the key to help us unblock our mm, difficulties with believing there's other dimensions, getting messages from the inner portion of ourself, um, experiencing mystical events, a lot of different things that uh, this will help uh, make more clear, easier, and allow us to move along and experience a more fulfilling life. Okay, today's date, um, 2-4-2014, and the sentence being, my curiosity allows me to understand my greater self. I'll have a closing prayer. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to see clearly and to come up with ideas that will help us become more aware of ourselves and moving us closer to a greater understanding of our connection with you thereby leading to more fulfilling lives for ourselves and those in our hearts and minds. Arm free. In the name of Jesus.